And joining me now, very excited to have on a good close friend of mine. It's been a while since we've caught up and had a chance to talk. He's a former USDA undersecretary under the Trump administration and former Iowa Agriculture Secretary, Bill Northey. And uh, Bill, it's great to catch up with you. How are you? I am great, Jesse. Good to see you and good to good to be able to have a conversation again. Yeah, very much so. It's great to see you as well here on, on our video chat and, and talk with you and have a conversation. And I know you've been a, a busy guy the last four years uh, at USDA and, and working out in D.C. And uh, really, um, you know, I, I, we were talking a little bit. It seems like you're getting adjusted well back to life in Iowa and back in Des Moines. Uh, and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I, I'd like to just start, though, and just get some of your thoughts as you reflect on your time uh, at USDA, what are some of the things you look back on and you're proud of in that time uh, there in Washington, D.C.? Well, you know, we we sometimes talk about the age of our pets and dog years and those kinds of things. Time time can it can seem like more than a, a handful of years uh, when you spend some time there, just the, the intensity of all of it. So the role that I had was called undersecretary. It's undersecretary for farm production and conservation. Uh, so you have the secretary, a deputy secretary, and then eight undersecretaries responsible for farm service agency, natural resources conservation service, and a risk management agency. Um, and so lots of stuff, standing up farm bill stuff, very interesting. Uh, process off the eight, uh, 2018 Farm Bill. Uh, we stood up several ad hoc programs, including market facilitation program and coronavirus food assistance program. Um, between the series of, of those ad hoc programs, another $50 billion worth of farmer support uh, that went out to producers and did it in a, in a speed that's unusual uh, for government sometimes as well. Um, because it needed to get out to be able to help people that were being impacted by trade or coronavirus. So I would say um, just really being able to help folks, whether it was um, weather emergencies or the impact of the, the, the trade disagreements that we had or, or coronavirus and being able to help people in a meaningful way. Um, and then we brought FSA and NRCS together. They had been in separate mission areas before. Even though they're in the same county offices in most places, most counties around the country in a service center together, they had different undersecretaries. And so we brought them together, the leadership together, and and uh, encouraged our rulemaking to be uh, coordinated to understand what each other was doing and look at software changes and other pieces. So um, really created a culture of cooperation. After all, the farmer doesn't care, you know, whether we got different undersecretaries, if that's what they call them, you know, or missionaries or whatever, they don't care. They just want us to work. And in some cases, our rules were such that they didn't work well together. And we were able to streamline some of that process as well. On the flip side, what are some things you learned uh, in your time in DC? Well, I, I, we're always growing, we're always learning as human beings. What are some things you learned just about how, how things work uh, in DC and how things work at USDA? Well, you can imagine it's a, you know, it's a big place, so it's a bureaucracy, and we all talk about the federal bureaucracy, and there's a reason for it. I mean, our mission area was 22,000 people, um, and for all the folks in that organization to kind of be pulling the same direction, you need some structure to all that, and and it, then it slows things down too in the way you stand up roles and the way you communicate things out to folks. But we have a big country. And so I got a chance to be able to travel around a little bit, too, to folks, not as much as Secretary Purdue, uh, as he was everywhere. He, he just did a great job of getting out and talking to folks and listening and hearing what was going on. I got to 48 states and be able to listen to some of our uh, employees as well as meet with many different farmers out there. And you remember that when you stand up a equip program for conservation it's got to work in a, for a potato farmer in northern maine and it's got to work for a rancher down in texas that just had a wildfire and so these these it's complicated to stand up programs that have to stretch to different producers 
you and I could be farming across the fence from each other and have a different situation, different mm -hmm. ages, different equipment, different landlords and other things. But boy, across the country, when we're farming different crops um, or livestock and and seasons and everything, it takes a, a whole process to make sure that when we make a rural work for one farmer, it doesn't mess it up for another farmer. And so it takes some real kind of thoughtful standing up process and checking back and clearing. And so it takes a while. Uh, so it can be a bureaucracy. Um, but people are, especially coronavirus, a lot of folks were hurting out there. We heard from them. Some we were able to help and others, you know, it just, we didn't have the tools to be able to do it. Um, it, it is a big country, but ag, ag folks are the same everywhere. They're, they're kind of humble and hardworking and proud of what they do. And, and yet they needed some help and could share with us and, and, um, and we could find some ways to be able to help. So just interesting as can be challenging. It's a, uh, government is accessible. I want to encourage folks, meet with your congressional folks, meet with the employees. People do want to hear um, what would work better in government for you. So uh, certainly um, that was very valuable to us when we could hear from other folks. Well, Bill, uh, shifting gears just a little bit, you know, uh, obviously anytime we have a change in administration, folks wonder, you know, what that's going to do for different programs uh, and agriculture is no doubt in that same boat wondering, okay, change in administration, what's going to happen to DC, what's going to happen to USDA. I think though, a lot of uh, folks in farm country were at least relieved to see Tom Vilsack uh, going in as the new USDA secretary. And I know you're familiar with Tom, him being a former Iowa governor and being at USDA before. What are your thoughts uh, on Tom Vilsack being USDA secretary again? And, you know, what things could look like here with a change uh, to the Biden administration? Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly think he's a great pick and I, I got a chance to be able to know him when he was governor in Iowa, but but then also I was secretary of agriculture in Iowa when he was um, U.S. secretary of agriculture. And so to be able to work together, smart guy, really cares a lot. And in all his experience, eight years has taught him even more about how to start his next time, um, as well as four years outside, um, being involved in agriculture the last four years in the dairy industry, dairy export industry. Um, so, um, it, he, he's going to bring some folks on that were around him at that, you know, in the last administration. And those folks are experienced. A lot of the folks that will be carrying out programs are career folks. Um, in our area with 22,000 people, we had less than a hundred that are political. All the rest of the folks are there still carrying out farm bill programs. Still have sign up for CRP, still have our PLC sign up, other kinds of things that are going on right now. So those folks all continue. But leadership does matter, and that will change. And there'll be some other focus here, whether it's on social justice and, and on, on climate change and carbon sequestration, other kinds of things. But many of the things you expect, farm loans, crop insurance, those things, they continue on. Maybe there'll be a little different trajectory as we go forward, but they continue on. Um, and certainly Secretary Vilsack proved that he could make things run on time when he was there before. He'll certainly do that uh, as he gets back in the office again. In, in your opinion, is there one area or another uh, for farmers uh, that really needs to be addressed? You know, we've heard rumors about, about livestock producers that – you know, they're looking for some different protections or whether it be the dairy side of the equation or farmers that, uh, you know, were hit by the derecho in Iowa last August. Is it, From what you've heard through the pipeline, is there maybe an area or two that you really expect focus for some changes uh, in the uh, lives or in the agriculture sector uh, at USDA moving forward? I think a lot in agriculture would love to be able to see some of the concentration 
um, issues addressed, um, especially around livestock purchases and, and some more players in that world. That's a tough nut to crack. That's a really challenging thing. It involves also Department of Justice and other things. What are the what are the laws? We've got international companies that own some of that as well. So that creates another uh, challenge to all that. And we kind of let this all happen to turn a different direction is a, is a challenge to carry out. I think there's a lot of interest and the Secretary Vilsack has, has expressed an interest in that. Um, I do think we'll see a lot of focus and a lot of conversation around climate and, and carbon sequestration. Um, uh, yeah, probably a, a challenge to be able to create those carbon markets in a way that talk about, you know, billions of dollars. Um, uh, the same way we talk about some of the other programs that were billions, but, but um, I do think there'll be a strong effort towards that. And then there's going to be some social justice kinds of things as well. They've already passed some or already started some legislation uh, to to try to address that. And I think that'll create um, some interesting conversations as that all plays out over time, too. But heard a lot of you mentioned dairy, Jesse, a lot of interest, especially in the midst of this last year when the cheese market went crazy and the mm-hmm. lick in the fluid market went through the floor and producers i talked to producers that in some cases were getting five dollars a hundred different and they were farming on their milk and they were farming across the fence from each other and for those non-farmers or non-dairy folks out there that may be twenty dollars versus fifteen dollars so i mean a huge difference a difference certainly between profitability and loss at the same time um, and they had no chance to really change to go to the other market uh, just because it was better. It's not like a corn farmer that says, wait a minute, I guess turn my truck around and go to the other market. Uh, these folks are locked into that. And so there was a lot of interest in addressing the milk marketing orders. Again, challenging. I would assume that's probably a farm bill discussion that will happen in Congress rather than an administrative discussion. But But I do think that's going to be one of those challenges that will be uh, taken on over the next couple of years as that next farm bill comes up. And you mentioned that farm bill, and I think that's a great question I could ask your opinion on as well. Obviously, we're seeing quite a few changes in Congress with who who's helping to craft that farm bill, who's on those House and Senate ag committees. We've seen some longtime members that aren't on there anymore, and as some newer members step in and older ones start to kind of not necessarily phase out or shuffle out, but some folks, you know, are kind of stepping aside and letting newer, uh, newer ideas come in to talk about that farm bill. Uh, do you, in, what do you anticipate seeing with this next uh, farm bill with some of these new ideas and new faces uh, coming into play here on these ag committees? I do think you're right, Jesse. I think there's going to be changes and, and uh, we've talked a long time about, Ag has less representation in Congress, and that's going to show itself in some farm bills. And, and we're seeing it on the committees right now. Uh, the representation is a little less for um, traditional agriculture and a little more towards um, either uh, specialty agriculture or or feeding programs or other kinds of things like that. And so I think that will gather some attention. Now, at the end of the day, I still think there's strong support for crop insurance. There's strong support for our safety net programs like our PLC and other things. I don't hear a lot of people asking for change there. There'll be some discussion around the conservation, but still strong support for looking at water quality and soil erosion control and helping habitat for wildlife and other things that we do there. Uh, But there'll be some additional focus on the from those ag committees on some things that some Aggies would look at and say, those those aren't the things they used to be talking about all the time. And so I do think that'll be some attention and that probably will go along with the coalition that puts together the next farm bill. So the farm bill is a coalition. It's not just Aggies deciding what needs to be in the farm bill, it's everybody in Congress. And it's always had, 
SNAP and feeding programs, school lunch programs, a part of it. Um, and that's always been a coalition. Well, I think that coalition probably continues to get a little bit bigger um, and address a few more issues uh, to be able to pass that next farm bill. So along with the ag provisions, along with those, the SNAP provisions and school lunch programs, there'll probably be some additional social justice programs, other kinds of things that are part of that, conservation programs. Uh, in kind of different angles that will be part of that eventual coalition that'll come together um, that will add to, add a few more pages to that big book of farm bill rules that, that come out of what could be a 2023 farm bill. Mm -hmm. A lot of interesting things to consider uh, moving forward. We'll definitely be watching uh, as we work through uh, the next couple of years uh, in Washington, D.C. And, uh, you know, Bill, I've enjoyed our discussion today. I'd just love to know what's next for you. You've had a long story career helping folks in agriculture. Obviously, your time as Iowa Ag Secretary and then Under Secretary USDA. What's next for you? I mean, are, are you kind of taking some time to just uh, slow down and reflect or do you got some plans in motion? Well, having some conversations with folks. Um, so I don't know whether I will. I, I'd sure love to get black on, back on a planter tractor this spring and get out to the farm. I don't know if that will happen or not uh, for sure. We'll see if that's part of part of the mix. But uh, I'm sure there's there's something out there. I don't know what it is yet, Jesse, um, uh, for me to be involved in. Um, good experiences. Um, and I'm sure the next chapter will be as interesting. I didn't really write this USDA chapter. This came to me as the secretary reached out and said, hey, we're looking to do some things. You want to be a part of it? And then even when I got there, neither of us knew that we'd have trade responses and, and coronavirus to get through. So um, just a really rewarding kind of experience. I'm sure whatever's next uh, will be that same. I just don't know what it is yet. Well, we'll definitely keep our eyes open to see uh, where you uh, where you head next and what you're a part of next. And of course, uh, anytime you want to chat, Bill, uh, you know my uh, my door is always open. I love to talk with you. Sounds great, Jesse. Thank you. Great to great to talk with you, Bill Northey, former Iowa Ag Secretary and former USDA Undersecretary, joining us here today. I'm Jesse Allen reporting.